Hey guys, Ryan here again, Ride Tech Marine. Just wanted to show you today, um, I've had a lot of requests now that I've had the uh, live transducer on the uh, trolling motor, how I actually did the mounting and then how the uh, cable management and all that stuff is done. A lot of people have been uh, curious about uh, the blue um, cable there and uh, I posted a video on YouTube this morning and a couple uh, people asked me almost instantly what uh, I had done there. So I just wanted to share this a little bit different than what other guys have used, but uh, I'm just going to uh, show you what I did there. And then uh, I also am doing the, uh, in the same video, I'll piece it all together um, and show how the transducer is actually mounted and uh, how I actually uh, cut the uh, the tubing there for the cable. So um, just give you a little walk around here. So uh, as you can see, here we go. So the bracket gets mounted up. Let me just uh, pop it loose here. There we go. So uh, the uh, the bracket, it gets stowed, the motor guide. Now this bracket um, is what I consider being my multi-fit, just like my multi-fit uh, structure scan transducer bracket. It fits a vast array of different motors as long as you have seven inches of flat or even less than that actually. It doesn't have to, it can stick out past the nose also. But uh, so basically almost any trolling motor, as long as it has the skeg and the prop on the same end, this live transducer bracket that I made is gonna work. Um, again, now that I'm here, I'll just show you a little rundown on it. So this is the um, my bracket that can actually do down scan, which is in the position right now. And then leaning forward can also do forward scan. Um, if you uh, look at my other videos here on YouTube, you'll uh, see me out in the water with and doing a bunch of explaining of that. Um, anyway, so how uh, it just bolts up there, all goes on, no problem. And then uh, this blue hose here is actually a, uh, a 3 8 ID coiled water hose, similar to what you find on a washdown system. You can see it, find it at uh, lawn and gardening stores and what hardware stores. Um, basically uh, pretty well anywhere you can find it. A lot of guys use air hose, but it's so small of a diameter, you can't actually fit the hose, the cable in it which that is what I've done here. So um, basically, I'll give you a rundown on that in a second. I'm just gonna show you the routing here. So um, on the bottom, it just fastens right up in against the grommet. And you can see that there. And then I actually mount on the hose clamp, I actually put a uh, just the zip tie there to hold it in point in there. Um, then I do three wraps here on the motor end of it, just three times. That allows for it to, the motor to still get stowed and have no issues. Let me see if I can uh, do this here with. So it just pushes right in and there it's locked in. So three times around, nothing's getting kinked or anything there. Um, pop it back out again. Oh, I'm gonna set this down. There we go. So three times around there, then you just leave about two or three feet of loose slack. Bunch of slack there. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. And then uh, another three or four um, coils up at the top. And what you can see here, if I stand back here and actually pull this up tight like it's in the running position, it's just getting taut there. So that's exactly what you want. This has enough rigidity that it doesn't really flop in the water too much, so it actually works really, really well, and uh, it's pretty tough, so um, you don't have to worry about cutting the cable or anything like that. And then up on the top, another zip tie. I just put right up at the top of the shaft there, uh, right by the motor guide's uh, uh, kind of depth stop, I guess you want to call it. Um, and then what I do, so this here cable is the actual live cable. Um, and then I mounted it, another zip tie up near the, the head, and then I actually routed it, might be kind of hard to see, in the actual bundle of cables and whatnot that uh, is on the, uh, on the rest of, for controlling the power and all that stuff for the rest of the motor. So in the end, it's very clean. There's nothing really hanging down too much here. Um, when it's in the actual uh, running position, there's not cables flopping everywhere. It's all very, very uh, clean install. So it just runs along. Now I didn't go through every loop you can see here. Bit of a gap, it didn't have to be uh, 
tight at the top. I did it a bit more. You can see that there. It's inside three of them, but uh, then it was every two or three. Um, and then basically come out the bottom, down by the actual um, base, and then uh, just comes out like the actual uh, 2D sonar. So the other cable here is the actual 2D one. I don't know if you can see that one in the video, but um, and then they just go to the actual fish finder. So let me just put this camera in the tripod for a second and I'll show you how it actually extends. All right, there we go. So basically, it's tight down here on this end and has some coils up on this end, but the center, like I said, is totally loose. So when you go to uh, extend it, I gotta keep it up here so it doesn't fall down. But uh, basically, this is exactly the same as if it was running. So um, basically, it just extends right out. And the top part just coils up at the top like we did at the bottom. And then, so there you go, you're at your 60 inches in this case. This little bit goes around the head and uh, it'll want to actually coil around there also, um, but it stays loose. And then uh, when you want to uh, stow it again, you just pull it up. You don't have to worry about the cable getting in the way. Press the button. And uh, slide her back in and away you go. So it works nice and easy. One other thing I should say here, take this back off. When you go to mount it, um, you're gonna want, so the motor guide stores with the kind of the nose of the head um, facing the outside of the boat. The cable, in my case, actually runs down the inside. So basically that means the nose of the trolling motor is facing out. So this is the way it gets stowed all the time. So the little adjustment knob, you wanna make sure you have that on the top. So in this case, in my scenario, um, that would be on the logo side. So when you're putting this together, you can put the adjustment knob and also the nut on either side. So it all depends. You wanna make sure you have the top, the adjustment knob, the thumb screw accessible so that when it's tight, this is solid. And when you have it loose, you can adjust it. Also, when you're doing the cable, you want to make sure you get it to enough slack in there that in the closed, it just sits kind of like it is. And when it opens, it just pulls it a little bit taut, not tight, of course, you don't want to rip anything, but, uh, and uh, that just goes all the way down. It's going to go down until it gets to the point it needs to for the forward scan. So, um, and you can tighten that back down afterwards. So that's basically that part of the video. Now I'm going to uh, also put in the rest of this, um, how I actually do the uh, the water hose. I'll probably insert an image of uh, what I got. I just got it on Amazon, it wasn't very expensive. And uh, then I'll also uh, show how to actually install the bracket on the uh, trolling motor, or the transducer on the bracket. All right, talk to you guys soon. Just thought I'd show you here also that uh, for the actual running the transducer cable down the actual big loam of uh, our Luma cables there um, that are on, in this case, the XF5, but most trolling motors. Um, like I say, you don't have to have it uh, going through every one. You don't have to physically wrap it straight through. All I do um, is pull it out a little bit, one loop, and then uh, just pull it in. So that's all basically it is. You're not actually trying to fish it through. Um, just basically pull the loop out um, let's see if I can do this here. With holding it. There we go. So basically just pull the cable um, where you want to go. It's only looped through that one right there. I'm just getting up to the cable here. Here it comes. So just pull it far enough apart that you can just get the uh, the end through. So that's all it is. So that's how quick and easy, simple it is to uh, actually take it out of the actual cable. And uh, like I say, when it's put in, it's nice and clean and you never know that uh, it wasn't meant to be there. 
Hey guys, Ryan here again, Ryan Tech Marine. Just wanted to show you um, installing the actual transducer bracket. Here, it's in a bunch of pieces here. Um, comes out of the box. It'll come out of the box assembled. You just gotta take it apart to uh, put the transducer on. So in the box, you can see the lower bracket, top bracket, uh, band clamps. These, was, these here have already been on my XI-5 uh, motor guides, so they already have the bench shape to them, but uh, they're gonna be longer. You trim them to length once you get them installed. Um, in the box also comes these little uh, clamp aid um, pieces. That's just to keep that sharp away and not get cut and scratched up. Stainless steel cuts you like a knife, so you want to put these things on. A lot of uh, other companies that may be out there doing it, they don't supply anything like that. And uh, it's just kind of an accident waiting to happen sometimes, especially when you're pulling it up or stowing it or whatever. So that's a good idea there. Um, there'll be the uh, through piece there. And then uh, a couple other pieces, grommet, um, lock nuts, and a little thumb screw. And uh, I'll show you how to do that right now. So um, that's all that comes with the kit. Um, you're going to use your existing transducer and the existing uh, four bolts and the actual lock nuts and uh, basically thread the cable through the actual hole. So it's like so, fits on there. Pretty self-explanatory there. I like to put the bolts on the back first. Um, and don't snug these guys down. So just put them into place, just get them started. Um, you want to uh, get them all started before you actually snug anything down. Um, so put that one on, lock washer. Now the front ones, actually one thing I should show you, I'm gonna quick take this apart. Um, a lot of guys ask about uh, assembly. So these are 100% stainless steel, um, laser cut, CNC formed, and uh, then they're also TIG welds. You can see the TIG welds in off the back there. So they are, you run it over with a truck. Eighth inch stainless steel, strong as can be. Um, so basically, I just want to show you that quick. Throw this back on. Installation takes a couple minutes. It's fairly, Quick and easy and painless. Now the front ones are a little bit tricky, just the way they are. And see here the bolt, the the hole is actually almost in line with the uh, the bracket. So you kind of got to go in from an angle. Um, basically, put them in, start them maybe by hand, drop them in the hole, and uh, just turn them, and then you. Uh, just kind of go and see, you kind of have to go with a little bit of an angle with your Phillips screwdriver there. Um, but uh, just take your time. Definitely, if you feel any resistance, stop. You don't want to cross thread any uh, of these, but uh, basically that's why you just want to uh, put it in and then with your hand actually start it. It's going to go in nice and easy. There I've got it in pretty far right off uh, just using my fingers. So now that all four are on, you're going to want to tighten them down. Snug them up. They don't have to be crazy. You don't want to uh, get them too tight, but you would definitely want them snug. And do that. So there, the actual bracket is attached now to the transducer. So then what you're going to do, the uh, the bushing piece, you're going to slide that into place. That can be a little bit tight. You're going to put it in until you see it going through the hole there. So you can see light right through. I'm gonna slide the uh, the top bracket, only goes one direction, pretty self-explanatory. The, uh, the round part is the back of the transducer, that goes at the back of the bracket. Um, then you're gonna take a 3 8 bolt, washer, and uh, what I like to do usually is have on my motor guide, um, you'll have to fool around with it and see which way you need everything. But uh, the head of the bolt, I have logo facing up because that is then when it's in the stored position, the logo's facing up and the head of the bolt is and the thumb screw also. You'll see that in a second here. So um, just uh, slide it in just like that. Go through. The other washer goes on there. Tighten that up. Is 
a 9 16 wrench, and uh, in this case, I have an adjustable wrench on the other side. Just tighten that up. And uh, basically, what I was doing, I ran this transducer all last week here, um, is the thumb screw is really nice um, to actually be able to tighten it up, but I actually left the thumb screw pretty loose the whole week, and I just tightened the 3 8 bolt up tight enough that, you know, that's pretty loose and sloppy. I just went a little bit tighter than that. Um, and then I didn't even have to worry about, I was going back and forth quite a bit from uh, going from a down scan to a forward scan. Um, so I just left the uh, thumb screw kind of loose. Um, the thumb screw has to be in there to actually be a reference point for the angle of where it has to go. I'll show you that in a second, but uh, basically right there, that's pretty well tight. If it feels a little bit too loose, you can tighten it up, but uh, you don't need it rock solid because uh, then you won't be able to move it. Um, so then the logo side here, I put the thumb screw straight through that hole. And then on the back side, um, basically what you're gonna wanna do is You'll see the bolt coming out through there. There's an acorn nut, 5 16 acorn nut. Drop a little bit of blue Loctite. Don't use red, because you'll never get it off without heat. Uh, blue or purple, you'll probably be hard pressed, hard pressed to find purple unless you go to like a gun store or whatnot. They'll have purple, but uh, the blue, nice, easy to uh, get off. You're just gonna shoot some uh, Loctite on that and uh, put that on, tight it down. And, uh, or you can just do uh, all I did when I ran it for the whole week, because I didn't want to have it on there, because I knew I was going to be taking it apart. Um, just tighten it up, and then just uh, put your adjustable wrench or your uh, pliers and uh, the other side needle nose pliers, and tighten that uh, bolt down real tight. Um, so what you want to have it done is have it be able to go in and out. The thumb screw can clearly travel in and out, but it won't work its way free, and uh, it won't fall off. So you can see right here, here it's loose um, and uh, it's able to uh, travel down the way it uh, should there and go on the, uh, the angle it needs to go on for the actual 30 degree angle. So, um, and then if you want, you can tighten up the thumb screw and once you get the thumb screw tight, then it's locked solid. Loosen it off, you can move it and uh, you can go from there. So basically that's it, then all you do Slide your hose clamps in through the hole and uh, install it and put it on. And uh, in the rest of the video, I'll show how I actually do the water hose. Um, basically, this was it that I cut. I'll explain how I actually cut it, but uh, it's, uh, let me just see, give you a rough idea on length. Um, stretched out. You're probably looking at seven, eight feet of water hose. Um, is the length that I needed for my 60 inch shaft. Um, so that's basically it there. It just comes in a 20 foot length, all coiled up. Um, I got this off of Amazon, it was fairly cheap. Um, this is it right here though, but just normal water hose. Um, you can see the joint there. It's uh, 3 8 inside diameter. So uh, you can fit the transducer cable down through it, no problem after you slit it. So it works really well. So that's that part of uh, installing the actual transducer onto the bracket. And uh, I'll do the, uh, the rest of it here and uh, we'll get it all together for you. All right, guys. So here is the other half of the hose that I used. Um, basically it's a 20 foot length. I used maybe half of it. Um, you just want to stretch it out enough that you can do a my 16 inch shaft. So um, it was probably about eight feet of actual cable that you want to use because the way it wraps up, um, it's going to be trial by error for every motor. But uh, like I said, three wraps roughly on the bottom, three on the top that you want to have zip tied on, and then the rest is just going to be loose that can sit along the shaft. So basically, um, this is how it was. So it's just normal water hose. Um, pretty easy to do there. Um, but you can see it's solid, but it's 3 8 diameter, which is a little bit smaller. I think the cable's 0.3125 or 5 16 give or take. Um, so what you're going to want to do, take your hose and a good utility knife. Um, I like that style blade there, the insert one. Make sure it's good and sharp, brand new. And uh, you just want to be very careful with this. Um, 
but it works really, really well. So all I do is set it down. You want to make the slot going around the inside of the cable. You don't want the slot on the outside because then the cable is going to want to come out. Um, if it's on the inside, the pressure of the cable is going to push around the outside and it's going to stay in there great. So um, all I do is, uh, in this case, I'm working outside on the truck. So just lay it down. You see it wants to fold inwards all the time. That's the side you're going to want to cut. So all I do, take the knife and this actually, you basically use the knife as your guide. So basically when you lay this down, that's halfway up the hose. So it's perfect. Um, and all you're going to do, nice sharp blade and go very, very slowly. Like I said, don't cut yourself. Um, just take your time and go right around. And you're only cutting through the inside. You don't want to cut through the outside. So just like that, nice, slow and easy and keep it that you're cutting the inside of the hose. And it doesn't matter if it uh, wanders a little bit. Um, you're just going to want to try to keep it in that area the whole time. So there's a little bit further. So basically that's it. So now basically it's got to slice through the whole entire thing. You can see that there. Um, what I should do, actually, I'm going to move the tripod here quickly back to the boat and uh, I'll actually just show you how easy it is to insert the cable then. Just one second. All right, here we go. So here is the actual uh, transducer cable for the actual live. So this is the one that's going to actually fit in the in the cable so or in the hose. So it's a little bit tricky to get started, but uh, it goes really nice. So it just slides right in like that. And then you just push in and it just falls right into place. And, and this part's a little bit tedious, but uh, once you get it, it's pretty easy to do. So it's just gonna fall right into place. Actually, I'll move it up a little bit so we can get a little bit more. Start at the bottom where you're gonna want to have it tight and then uh, go from there. So just like this, it's moving right in and then you can see it's wanting to actually keep it coiled. Um, I cut a boat yeah, right to there. So there you can see it's actually in it now. And uh, once it stays coiled, then because this cut is on the inside, the cable won't actually want to come out there. So that's basically how I did all this. And uh, once it's in, you don't even know it's really in there. So it works out really well. So that's that part of the video and uh, that works well. So just a uh, fairly cheap blue 3 8 um, coiled water hose. I'll show a link to uh, or a picture of uh, where I got on Amazon exactly what it was. Um, you guys or most people being in the States, uh, you guys can get a lot easier than we can uh, just because you guys have a lot more selection when it comes to things like Amazon or whatnot. But uh, I tried to find black, but uh, in this case, my boat's blue and uh, the blue hose look kind of cool too. So that's why I went with the blue.